Welcome back to Mr. Hayes' World of Math. We're talking through central limit theorem here. We just went through some simulations to show why it works. So if you want to go back, uh, links down below for that. Otherwise, if you're just here for the formality part, here we go. The central limit theorem says that the sampling distribution of X bar is approximately normal when your sample size is large. And large being defined is 30 or more. Okay, and we will actually, you can abbreviate this CLT for central limit theorem. And so, because who has time to write all that other stuff? We're mathematicians. We've got abbreviations for everything. Anyway, so what this will allow us to do is it does not matter what the population distribution looks like. It could be skewed, it could be you know, bimodal, whatever. If we take size samples of 30 or more, boom, there we go. And that's part of the reason why samples, small sample sizes, like you see some of these studies, it's like, we studied 12 people who ate chocolate every day. You can't really do much with them, okay, for a whole variety of reasons. The other thing here is that for normal distribution calculations, and again, this isn't going to be super surprising, if you have a sample distribution of X bar, we can treat it as normal. There's my mean. There's X bar. Um, mean and standard deviation. Standard deviation is going to be sigma divided by square root of n, and so your z-score X bar minus your mean divided by standard deviation. And then you can use table A, central, or... Uh, Cumulative, normal CDF, that type of thing. So, time to practice this. Your situation for the practice is going to be this. We're going to talk about iPhones, okay? So go through, we give you the information here about the population and your simple random sample of some iPhone users. Take a look, see what you come up with, check your answers in a minute after you unpause. All right, so for the first question, so we have up here things to note. Um, it's skewed to the right. We have a mean of 13.5. We have a standard deviation of 3.75 hours. That's the population. So those are going to be our parameters. We have a random sample. We love seeing the phrase random sample of 100 iPhone users. So that is going to be our N. Okay. So the first thing that they ask you to do is this. Describe the shape of the sampling distributions for X bar and this for samples of 100 real randomly selected iPhone users justify your answer. We can say it's approximately normal because the sample size is large enough, and you do need to state that 100 is bigger than 30 to use the central limit theory. Okay, so we've checked our normality, so we're good to go there. Question two, find the mean and standard deviation of the sample distributions of X bar. Be sure to show the 10% condition. We need to be able to show the 10% condition to show that we don't have to worry about Things not being replaced, remember. 100, which is n, and if it helps you do this, do this, n equals 100, which is less than or equal to 10% of all iPhone users. Okay, So that means that if 100 was 10% of all the iPhone users, then we would only have 1,000 iPhone users. And we know that we have a lot more than 1,000. So your mean of your sampling distribution is going to be the same as the mean of the population, so 13.5 hours. And your standard deviation is going to go down because this we're going to take the um, standard deviation divided by square root of n. So 3.75 divided by square root of 10, and I get, boom, 0.375 hours. All right? And I think the last question, calculate the probability that the weekly screen time is between 12 and 13 hours. Um, so your sampling distribution of x bar is this. So you draw out your normal curve. We have the mean marked. We have our two indications marked. We have our little normal stuff fit there. And then we calculate out Z. So again, we're going to go into the idea that you're doing this from table A. So we calculate a Z score for 12. Well, actually, you have to calculate a Z score for both. To show up. My apologies. So we calculate a Z score for the 12, and we get negative 4. So we already know. And again, this is the reason why it's calculating Z scores is important. 12 doesn't seem that's far from 13.5. But since you're doing it with a z-score, you can say, wow, that is really kind of far by the time we take standard deviations into account. Negative 4 is way past negative 3. So that means it's not going to be very much. And in fact, if you look in table A, it actually has a probability of 0. Um, we're also going to do 13. We get a z-score of negative 1.33. That gives us a probability, or a, yeah, proportion of 0 0.0918. So the probability that it falls between 12 and 13.8 subtract those two numbers and we get 0 0.0918. Again, you could use the normal CDF if you wanted to, just make sure you label all the parts. So again, 
this central idea of the central limit theorem is going to change a lot of what we do. It allows us to use things that we already know how to do. And so much of math is that, right? How can I take what I'm seeing and moving it into a place that I already know how to do it? So, hope it makes some sense. If not, drop some questions down below. Like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you for the last section of 7.3 soon.